Okay, here we're looking at biodiversity, and we see kind of an example here with all the different mushrooms and the large degree of biodiversity we see here with the different flower types, the grasses, the hay, the trees, and everything going on with this image. Now, more specifically, biodiversity is defined as the variety of life in a habitat. So while we're seeing on the plant species here, there's also probably insects and animals living in this environment also. Biological diverse ecosystems are in general more stable than simpler ones. There's a lot of uh, ability for different species to kind of fill in certain conditions or to buffer on different climates or years or weather patterns. Species rich richness it refers to the number of species in an ecosystem. So in ecosystems considered to be more species rich, there's a lot more different types of species. And it's the quantity that usually measured by a biologist to characterize an ecosystem's biodiversity. So this, um, the quantity is usually measured for biodiversity. The more quantity we have, the greater biodiversity, the greater variety of life in the habitat. Now, but there's two main factors that are important for promoting biodiversity. The first one is ecosystem size. So larger ecosystems contain more diverse habitats and therefore have a greater number of species. Just simply by having a larger area, we can probably say that that's going to contain more habitats and therefore a greater number of species. A reduction in ecosystem size will reduce the number of species it can support, and ultimately this could lead to an extinction. Uh, final collapse here, in extreme cases, if we lose an ecosystem where it becomes too small, to be a support on um, a large number of species that can cause it to collapse. We see just a couple here, major ones here. Uh, the desert regions, we have the tropical rainforest, uh, polar ice caps up here, temperate forests, temperate grasslands. These are just some examples of ecosystems. Now, another important factor for promoting biodiversity is the latitude. The number of species in the tropics is far more than that in the Arctic regions. This is because of a longer growing season and climactic stability. So we see an example here of the modern uh, latitude biodiversity gradient, showing the distribution of living terrestrial vertebrate species and the high concentration of diversity found at the equatorial regions here, in the equators in this region. The red color spectrum, and um, it declines till so you get to the, the poles, the blue end. So this red area indicates a high degree of this biodiversity. We see that tropical rainforest being definitely a hotbed for a large um, number of different types of species. Now let's look at a little smaller scale. We can look at island biodiversity. And what we have here is an equilibrium model. So the species richness on an island is dynamic equilibrium between colonization and extinction. So the reason we're looking at an island here, we're looking at a very small region. And we're going to have a lot less variables to look at when we're looking at an island. So things we want to consider when looking at island biodiversity, there's two main important factors. First one's kind of obvious, obvious, and that's island size. Larger islands, so in this case island two, will have more species than smaller ones. So here's our mainland, here's where um, organisms can kind of uh, spread out and migrate. Uh, island two, because it's larger, is likely to have more species than the smaller island one. Another factor that plays into this is the distance from the mainland. So here we have Island 1 and Island 2 about the same size. But Island 2 is a lot further fly, a lot further swim, uh, a lot greater distance. So the distant islands will have less species than those near the mainland, simply because these have a lot shorter distance to travel. These are more likely to get a highly diverse number of species. Here they might have to have specialized skills to travel a long distance. So the distance effect and the area effect uh, number of species, those that are far away can have less species than those that are near the mainland. Here the area effect. Small islands are going to have less um, biodiversity than large islands. So if we look at this kind of uh, summary graph here, we can see the take-home message here is fewer species, small distant island. So a small distant island is going to have fewer species than a large nearby, and that's nearby to mainland island. They're going to have many species. So this gives an idea of increasing species richness, and those that are large islands and closer to mainlands will have a greater number of species than those that are, are small and are very distant from the mainland there. Hopefully this is a little bit of a better understanding about biodiversity, how it applies both on the large scale and the global scale, and also on the smaller island scale.